Welcome to Twisted Rush Pro Studio. I'm using version 17.16. In this video I'm going to cover the Pro Cloner Dabs brush, uh, which is new to 17.16. What I have here is a photograph set up on a page. And with the cloner brushes, I mean the basic way they work is you take um, data from your source image and put it on a new page. So once you have your source photograph or image set up on a, a page. Uh, the first thing you want to do is go to page menu and select either set page as clone trace source or set layer as clone trace source. If you s select page it will take uh, everything that you're currently looking at uh, with on within this current page. If you select layer it will only be taking the contents of the current layer. For this I will select set page as current uh, as clone tracing source. In this case, uh, in, in common when you're cloning an entire image, you want to go to a new page. So I'm going to use the right arrow on the keyboard to go to the next page. You can see the page size is different. Uh, easy way to set that to be equal to your clone source is to go to page menu, set page size to clone source page size. So now your page size is, is set to that of the clone source. I've already set up a brush um, with the brush control settings uh, that I like for, for this particular image. And this brush is in the new art set called Art Pro Cloners. There's a basic cloners in here and a variety of uh, other cloning brushes that give uh, different effects. So when working this with this brush, you basically just draw your strokes. The individual dabs you paint will follow the direction of your of your brush stroke. So I'm zoomed out here a bit, but if I zoom in, I'm going to hold down the space bar to select the pan tool and drag. So you can see when we're zoomed in here to the 100% uh, view, we can see that the individual dabs of paint are following the direction of the brush stroke. Now with the various settings here, we could also adjust that. Currently I have a dab length set to six. If for an extreme case, I set it to something quite a bit higher, we could see now we can get some wild, wild effects um, as well as our standard effects that we may want to get with uh, this. So I'm going to clear that and go back to a more reasonable uh, dab length for this. Image. Also keep in mind when you're working on uh, cloners, if you press the T key in the keyboard, it will turn on a trace image of your source. So oftentimes this is uh, helpful when you're trying to uh, follow the, the image or you're not sure where the image is going to appear from your source onto your, your new page. So you can see here by the beard, I'm doing a downward stroke to uh, enhance the, the feel of the direction of the beard. So here I turned off, press T again to turn off the trace. So I'm going to zoom back in, just use the toggle here for uh, one to one. And you can see that's uh, pretty much uh, what you need to know to to use this cloner, uh, you can then go and uh, complete uh, this image. Also, it's uh, one of the handy things to do with, with cloners is uh, when you're done is you could also use filters on the resulting image. In this case, I'm going to go to Photo Photo Detailer. Let's, uh, I think I'm going to want to increase the edge detail up, maybe the saturation down, and uh, increase the contrast and hit Preview. So you can see now we took our basic cloner and uh, we enhanced the, the dabs quite a bit, with uh, probably to an extreme, but you get the idea of some of the things you can do. So I'm going to clear this and go back to the original page. Also, you could have done the filter prior to cloning. Here I'm going to go and select, again, set page source as, uh, as clone and trace. Go back to the page I want to clone to. And now when you see the stroke, we're picking up the, the image which has already been filtered in advance, so we're getting that more extreme color 